this is probably one of the biggest things that a lot of people see you teaching your kids how to shoot the guns. Mm -hmm. At what point a time when you was like, bro, I need to teach these my kids how to protect themselves? Uh, I shot somebody in front of Derek. I shot two people in front of Derek. And at that point, uh, I was going to teach them anyway, but it just sped up the process of being like, I, I knew her curiosity was going to be on a level it had never been. What happened? If um, What birthday was that? It was on my birthday, bro. Um, uh, that was my 25th or 26th. But I went to go pick up a young lady who was the mother of three of my beautiful children. Shout out to my children and her. Um, and, bro, her family having a disagreement. I pull up at the wrong time, wrong place. I get pulled into the disagreement. And the next thing I know, I shot uh, her mom and her brother. I mm. got to say this all the time. I did not intend to shoot her mama. Her mama did what a mom would do. And when I drew down on her son, she jumped in the way. And mm. she ended up getting shot. Because I definitely was trying to kill her son. Well, I wasn't trying to kill him, but I definitely want to shoot him. But, yeah, um... Uh, so yeah, bro, Derrica happened to be with me that night. And from there, I knew it was more important than ever to start giving her the game on guns because they used to see me with guns in the crib. They would be curious, but as a child, once you see somebody actually using on someone, that's that's going to heighten your curiosity. So Derrica been learning about guns since she was three. I put a gun in her hand at three years old. Her brother was six, and they've been rocking ever since. But yeah, bro, I, I feel like I don't want it to sound... No, nah, fuck it. It is what it is America. I think it's we absolutely gotta teach our children how to kill. Mm. It's 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 nece it's necessary. Like, them niggas out there don't care. They don't be like, oh bro, he twelve, let him go. No, nah, they'll blow his motherfucking head off for like, oh she eleven, don't kidnap her. Mm. No, they'll snatch her little ass up. So yeah, bro, I don't Yeah, center mass. You shoot that motherfucker in his face or his head. All all we work on is center mass. Well, I don't want no chest, I don't want no stomach, I don't want no leg. Knock a motherfucking head straight off their shoulders, bro. So how do you protect the irresponsibility of a child, though? Because, again, you could teach him how to have mm -hmm. used guns and things like that, but kids going to be kids at the end of the day. How do you, how do you, where do you draw that line as far as protecting them from themselves? So with that, bro, I tell parents this all the time, you do have to gauge their maturity. My children grew up, like, their maturity, their maturity levels were sped up. I think, one, because mine was sped up, and two, I was a single dad for a great deal of their early existence. So I was raising them on my own, like solo. Derrick and mama was going through some changes, so she had to get some distance to figure stuff out with her. And then Derek's mom was stationed in Korea in the Air Force. So I was doing shit on my own. So they grew up more resilient and stronger than your average average three and six year old gonna grow up. Cause they, they, they running with a whole man who's still figuring himself out. I'm like 22 at this point. I had Derek at 18. I had her at 21, 22. No, I'm like 25. But yeah, bro, you do have to gauge their maturity level because every child ain't ready. Like my two right under them, Melanin and God, they aren't ready. They they free spirited. They're my babies. They beautiful little girls. They they're very gentle. They're not ready to like pick up a gun. Derek was ready at three. They're both six. They aren't ready. So it do you do have to like study your child and assess if they really understand the seriousness of life and death and that this shit will kill them or somebody use mm -hmm. the right or wrong way. It's crazy because like I, I think you probably would think it is differently, but I think it's because the culture shock. Like you from Tampa, mm -hmm. from Baltimore, East Coast, like you get caught with a strap. Mm -hmm. It's over for you, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, can we strap in Baltimore? <clears throat> they just now passed a law where you can okay. um conceal the carry, right? So uh but it's funny, I, I have this different prayer. It's like I always pray, like, I never want to be in a position where I have to prove my love mm -hmm. to, to my family right. because I'm willing to do whatever I got to do, mm -hmm. right? But I don't ever want to have to prove that. I feel like you probably would think that, obviously, like, I'm waiting on a nigga to try me. So, bro, <clears throat> it's more of that gross shit. I ain't going to lie, bro. I did have that mentality early on. I had a, um, bro, I think, that's why I agree when they're talking about music and movies. It is mm -hmm. very influential, bro. Like, I remember I bought my first Mac 11, uh, just loving men to society. I bought my first Tommy gun. Right now, I brought on like six Tommy guns, and that's thanks to uh, damn Lawrence Fishburne was in that movie. It was some, it was a gangster movie back in the day, some mob shit. But yeah, bro, the things that my parents had gave me access to, it did like definitely influence me. Mm -hmm. So yeah, bro, I I did have periods in my early life where like I was ready, like just come outside ready to. I didn't want it, bro, but I knew the minute it presented itself, I was gonna show up with motherfucking A plus because I'm train. I I train, 
And I'm just like, I'm on that. Like, if y'all chilling, I'm chilling. But if y'all not chilling, I'm going to start shooting immediately because I'm just, I'm ready to shoot. I'm ready to kill somebody. And then I ain't going to lie, bro. When I finally shot two people, um, that shit was nothing like the movies. It was nothing like the music. That shit was very traumatic. It was, bro, the, the emotions your body go through, all that shit, bro. It was crazy as fuck. It was a, a, a crazy ass. It ain't no shit I want to experience again. Mm. But if I had to, bro, I'm definitely like, sign me up. Cause I I'm I don't I don't want no problems, bro. But if they ever present themselves, yeah, I'm definitely going. I'm going home. I know that. Is that by any that, means? It's something that you think about to this day, like those two people you shot. No, nah, bro. I don't think about that, but I do. Uh, my head always on the swivel just because of the looming danger that that come with living in America. Period. Especially these times, like niggas is thirsty, niggas is moving different. So that's on my mind. But hurting them, nah, bro. I I, I release that. I. I I ain't even gonna say I forgave myself because I still don't hold myself to blame. Like, they were just on some wild shit. And niggas know, like, one thing I feel like everybody universally know is like, it's one thing to play with a motherfucker, but don't play with people when they got their kids. That's mm. a death sentence. Like, just stay the fuck away from people when they with their children. So, nah, bro, if I had to do that again, I'd do that again. Shit, would probably be worse because I shoot way better now, but yeah. Damn, man, it's crazy because I, uh, I was saying, like, I was telling my shorty, like, bro, I be in a crib. I don't know if you've seen a Bun B situation when they try to run up in his crib. Mm-mm, recently? Nah, this was like a while ago. But they tried mm-hmm. to run up in his crib with his wife. And they, they didn't know he was upstairs. He mm-hmm. was literally upstairs on the, taking the shit or some shit like that. Mm-hmm. And he ended up shooting a nigga. And, um, Damn, for real? Yeah. yeah. It was Bun B, I think, if I'm not mistaken. You look Jeez. it up. Yeah, it was Bun B, right? Yeah, so um, I say... I was telling my girl, like, bro, it's crazy because he 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 literally said on The Breakfast Club, like, I... I, I it was easy for me because I already had it in my mind how that would go down. Right. And I would tell my girl that all the time, like, bro, it's like, I've, if something was to happen in this room and anywhere, mm-hmm. in my mind, I already thought about how it would go down, how I react. Right. And some people would say, bro, that's uh, that's being pessimistic. Or it's always, it's, that's kind of like bringing negativity to you because you're thinking mm-hmm. about it. For me, bro, it's, I, I don't see how you can live here and not have that mentality. Mm. Or like you, and bro, I'm a real private person. Like, I don't come out of the house. But it's still like, Danger is everywhere. Like, you could pump gas. You can go pick up a pizza. You got a motherfucker get your address and find a way to get into your gate, and now it's on. So for me, bro, I that's what I say, bro. Like, when we talk about earlier with faith, it's just the readiness. For me, like, I train so much that I'm, like, confident enough. Like, when bro said he knew how that was going to happen, that shit come from training. That shit to have you not feeling invincible, but it's going to have you ready. Like, bro, if y'all niggas is ninjas, snipers, whatever y'all want to do, I'm with it. Like, I'm trained in several different places, but... No, nah, bro, I don't see this pessimistic. Like, if people really looked at the murder rate and, the and bro, if you black, period, like, our culture is the most affected, the most locked up, and the most motherfuckers that get killed, but the least educated. Mm. A nigga thing like that is just clearly, like, either they know some level of peace and saviorism, saviorism that we don't, or they just out here, like, on some ignorant shit, like, nothing can happen to me because yeah. I'm Johnny and, yeah, I prayed today, all right? Bro, I ain't gonna lie, I came from a place where, bro, it's get crazy fast, quick, mm-hmm. fast, and in a hurry. And if you can't think on your feet, it's for sure, bro. over for you. Bro, like, I tell you about, like, situational awareness is important. I ain't sitting with my back to the door. I don't keep my kids and my, my woman not in the street. Uh, We move, we walk with proximity. I mean, I got my own security company and all, but even when I'm on my solo shit, like, I'm moving a certain way because you just never know. Like, it's niggas that wake up every day with the best intentions and die that night. Mm. Niggas ain't. I'm going home. Curious is, 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 since we here. You know, when you walking with your family, right, mm. or your or your wifey, right? Do you walk in front or in back of her? So, bro, it depends on the environment. We gonna switch up. We gonna zigzag. Like, what where, where we was at? We was in little five points yesterday. And if we moving and we got people coming in an opposing direction, I'm gonna lead because if we don't really have people behind us, I feel safer with me getting in front. Cause if it is a threat, bro, gotta meet me first. If mm-hmm. a car gonna swerve, they gotta meet me first. Uh, no, nah, bro, we got bro, we got a bubble that we walk in, and if people come in that bubble, like motherfucker gonna put hands on you. Like either really with the bubble, I'm with security. You ain't even gonna get close to the bubble. But if I'm on my like solo shit, like I ain't moving with security today. We got a proximity we move it with the children and the lady where like you ain't gonna get close, and if you get that close. So basically, bro, uh, like I said, it depends on the environment. But my children are trained too. And I don't hang with women that don't train. So I ain't gonna lie, our bubble, our bubble fluctuates because everybody know how to kill people. Like, I ain't gonna lie, that's one one strong suit about the family that I'm confident with. Like, 
My son shoot better than like anybody in my family besides my pops. He really can outshoot anybody, and he don't use sights. He like just straight right eye. He gonna knock some shit out. He good from two hundred yards. My daughter ambidextrous. She could bust that motherfucker left or right. So she may come out. You just never know. But with the bubble, bro, I, I ain't gonna lie. With the bubble, with my children and my lady, like I said, it fluctuates because we know who gonna lead. We know who's stronger. I know my son, long range. He's stronger than anybody. Like even with my crib. So I got security that said 24 hours, but if a motherfucker ever get past, my children have a plan of action. Like, you go here, I'm going here, I'm meeting niggas here, Chelsea gonna meet them here. Ain't no way they should be able to get in because you got the overhead shot, you coming this way. Bro, we got intentional guns set up throughout the house. I tell everybody, got, you got to look in the floating bookshelves. That shit look like you got a stack of books, but it's like a cold on the side or it's a little magnet, drop it down. Whole motherfucking bazooka pop out the wall. So shit like that. But like I said, bro, our bubble fluctuates depending on the environment. If it's a lot of traffic in the environment. And if we really got time to retreat. If it's a handgun type of reaction or we really got time like... I mean, shit, I got a flamethrower. So it just really depends on the environment and what's going on. Of who gonna lead and who gonna shoot first, who gonna shoot second. Okay, no, nah, because I'm always looking to ways to like protect myself my family. I ask that because most of the times I walk... Unless there's a lot of people, I'm most of the mm. times I walk in the back of my woman because I can mm. see right. what's in front of me and I can catch what, what, what might yeah, come behind. Come behind, they're gonna they're gonna grab you first. They yeah. Give her time to move or give her time to shoot something and get up. Yeah, no, yeah, I'm bro, just like, Even when I'm sleeping, I don't sleep next to the door because that extra split second can make sure that I get us out of here. Mm -hmm. When niggas approach me, uh, most times my security ain't gonna let them approach. They're gonna ask me first, like, "Is it cool?" And I'm be like, "Yeah," because I I do show love, but. Any man I talk to, bro, front and center, he's never, he's typically never gonna get like a face to face shot with me. I'm always gonna leave with my left because I'm right handed. So I'm always coming like, if I gotta draw down or if I gotta swing on, if I gotta get off and steal him before he get off, I'm always leading with his left because I'm right handed. Uh, bro, down to the host, I tell people like, even with gun holsters, when you buy one, walk around the crib with it. Like, that's, that's your lifesaver. Y'all need to have a dope relationship. You need to have a feel for it. You need to really know. When I wear my sweats, when I wear my dress, when I wear my shorts, whatever I'm wearing, I'm comfortable with the holster. I know how I'm coming. I know how I'm going to retreat. It's, I ain't going to lie, bro. It's a lot that come with safety and just being in a position where you feel like you going to win no matter how this shit go. But, yeah, bro, with the proximity, really in arm's reach. So you got to give us, like, three feet in total. Don't come in that bubble. And if you come in that bubble, you, yeah, somebody going to touch you. It, it, may not, it, might, it may not be violent, but a nigga definitely going to, a security gonna hit your ass with that, <laughs> that chop, move your ass to the side.